ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on past issues. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. We're here to talk about this. You can see it behind me. It's Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. It's out. It's out. I'm happy. So happy. Happy and sad. Because essentially what we've uh, learned from uh, the few hours I've actually had to play the game so far is that there is a lot of good quality of life changes in Final Fantasy VIII Remastered, but not enough graphical changes to keep a lot of people happy. For me, it's a, a, a good medium ground because I have actually been playing a lot of the Final Fantasy VIII P version. Um, I actually own the original version on disc and I also bought it on Steam. <laughs> so and I, I'm super numerary ways. I, to be honest, Square Enix can uh, make me an easy mark for this game. So I'll, I'll keep buying it as soon as it keeps it. I've already bought it on Switch and PS4 for this generation. But uh, the release on Steam uh, recently and also the old 1998 uh, PC release has been heavily, heavily modded by the community over the years. Uh, two of these particular ones I always like to point out to people is Lunatic Pandora and Roses and Wine. Roses and Wine dealing with the absolutely god-awful soundtrack to the PC version, which I think was just an issue with like the, the synthesizers they decided to use for the MIDIs in it, which meant that they didn't sound like the PSX versions and didn't sound really that good in a lot of ways. Um, that's the problem with MIDI and what particular way you choose to synth through them and stuff. And Roses of Mine resolves that problem by taking things like Black Mage's music, um, other orchestrated soundtracks, essentially high-quality OGG files of uh, Final Fantasy VIII soundtracks that have been appearing over the last 20 years. And it works. It works very well. It works. It's super, super effective. Um, it has a couple of glitches, obviously, with being a PC mod. But majority of the way, um, the sound loops and everything work perfectly fine for it. So it's been a pleasure to work with that audio. And then we've got the Lunatic Pandora mod, which actually is a... A gathered mod, uh, there's one guy who's kind of like uh, curated a fair amount of the mods and turned them into like a single pack. Now he does take money for it and the money goes back to the mod developers. But um, I was willing to pay the five bucks for a mod pack just just for the, the ease of experience. Where it literally was one click, open up the game with a different box, boom, the game starts with all the mods attached. And you have all the monsters and uh, GFs and players and a, f a few of the NPC characters all completely reskinned and uh, retextured and remodeled to actually look great in HD. And they, uh, those have actually gone as far as actually doing the backgrounds, taking the, the pixelated backgrounds that were there and ran them through an AI filter, like the detail pixelate to sharpen them back up again and do a lot of cool stuff with it. Now, all these things are in the PC mods that we've had for the last few years. None of these things are in the PS4 Switch xbox and steam releases of final fantasy yet now this is to be understood and expected because this is a remaster being done by the official developers so it's going to have a very different kind of like a, uh, a m than actually being the mod community which is about trying to fix all of the things individually like by death by a thousand cuts or but well, healing by a thousand cuts i suppose is a better way to say it well the uh, this remaster is designed to kind of like get it out in hd for markets and kind of bring it to a level of quality that was similar to the Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 9 remasters that we've gotten over the last couple of years. Now, people have, were crazy about the fact that Final Fantasy 8 wasn't actually covered in the previous one. They went to 7, then to 9, and there's nothing heard about 8. There's a lot of story behind the behind why that was the case. But uh, Dot Emu and um, remember who the other people were that actually were involved in it? There's a few different kind of like, not mod communities, but uh, Revival artists that essentially brought this version to us to play out, and Square Enix obviously published it. The changes they've made are very, very surface level. We have new models for our main characters, we have new models for the main NPCs, but we haven't got the backgrounds redone, we haven't had the world map redone. There's a lot of stuff that still is just being cleaned up, and maybe whenever I buy cleaned up, they've kind of purposely like. Check to see how it looks in up-res, and went like, mm, no, no, throw a blur on that motherfucker, because then we're not going to have to redo that. And they've kind of like taken a bit of a sidestep to actually do a tone conversion for HD. But it's kind of to be expected, considering the circumstances of the game, and also the fact that it is a PS1 classic being brought into the modern era. And it wasn't expected to ever look this good, but I'm glad that uh, Squall is a finally at least the prettiest boy in the room. He actually is. He is the prettiest guy in the room, and it works. Some people don't like the redesign in his hair. Um, I personally don't mind it in any way, shape, or form. I actually like the design. I was actually a little bit more perturbed by the some of the fan modded ones because they're going like, mm, that's anti-gravity divine hair, and I'm not a massive fan of it. So we're 
probably going to actually work out of that uh, in the future. Really, like, I'm sure that that they'll. That'll be the meme that'll carry on from this, but otherwise, we'll actually just accept that there was some limitations. The other side of it is that they've actually added some uh, quality of life adjustments to the game. For example, in combat, whenever you actually are using, whenever you actually are making option choices, you can hold down a single button to rapid press. There's an auto fire built into the combat, which is, I have found unbelievably useful in the draw sessions and carding sessions and um, just auto killing essentially uh, small fry whenever you run into them uh, in the first couple of hours of gameplay that i've had so far and on top of that you also have x3 speed oh, which is the one thing i really wanted i needed it it's just the fact that it can feel like a drag sometimes and uh, that triple three speed does not affect timers on some of the events in the game so example like efforts cavern or the uh the 30 minute clock getting out of dolette or the uh the train these things all are unaffected by the triple three, but the gameplay is affected. So the, those awkward long delays that you felt in some parts of it are probably are, are nearly gone, or they've actually been made worse because you kind of have less control because you feel like you're zipping around all over the place sometimes. They've also added a ATB gauge max out as well as infinite health, uh, which I kind of wish they had actually done separately. I would love to have actually had essentially haste permanently on or had my limit breaks on at all the times or my HP on individually. Delineating down those options would have been a really nice choice, but they didn't. It's all keyed to one button, so you click one, and you're essentially invincible and a badass, and you can kill absolutely everything in hits. And then on the other side of that is, whenever you press both of them together, that's their do pulling these functions, you get no encounter, which is kind of useless in Final Fantasy VIII, because no encounter, once you have Diablos, and you go and do the AP for it, you have half encounter and no encounter as part of the game. So, I can see why people are annoyed. I would have actually liked more trainers. Like, a, something that might have been, like, uh, give, uh, give 100 magic of uh, whatever you're drawing. Uh, like that. So, whenever you draw, you draw once, and it gives you a max out of 100 immediately. That, those kind of things, something that might be a little trickier to figure out to do, would have been nice. One I would absolutely have loved to something I have actually noticed on the PC version that was modded is the ability to cast magic without losing any magic. That was a good choice in the PC mods. Why do we not have it on the, the remaster on consoles and on PC? Like they, it, it seemed like the most simple thing to fix. If you're going to if you're going to put cheats into the game, let people use magic. So they don't lose their stats. I mean, essentially, once you have Ultima, once you have uh, uh, Meteor, once you have uh, Demi, those things are super important to have in your skill set. But there's things that you actually kind of rationed and made use of because you wanted to like take down an enemy's health without killing it and then card it. So you use some of your demi. If just being able to cast those spells without any willy nilly worry, or being able to cast like um a full life on a on a zombie without going like ah, I used up one of my full lives. So I don't really get that many of them at the very early part of the game. It would have been a nice touch. Uh, so I'm not annoyed by the choices they made. I'm actually looking forward to playing the game. But there's. Uh, there's a, a very keen sense that this was just a by the numbers, get it out the door because people will not shut up about it, remaster. And they got the money, they got us, and we're not all going to spend the money on it to actually enjoy it. So I'm, this, this is kind of like a, an emotional journey for me to kind of just think about all the things I like and dislike about this remaster. But I don't know if I'm frustrated or annoyed with Square Enix. Or I'm frustrated and annoyed with our expectations as fans because I know that we have a better version out there. It already exists on the PC with the fans and the community behind it. So being able to play this portably, being able to play this on my home console, being able to play this again on a bunch of other sources, nice with the additional changes that have been added to it. But eventually I would like to see another remake, a remaster, a remake. Of Final Fantasy VIII over the long run. It's, but I mean, we're chatting. By the scale of time it takes for Final Fantasy VII to get it remade, we're going to be. I, we'll be on Yakuza 15 by the time that is actually happening. So, yeah. Happy, but also sad. I, I am both tragedy and comedy today. So, we're going to jump into a gameplay of Final Fantasy VIII. But I wanted to get my thoughts out beforehand. Feel free to join us on uh, youtube.com forward slash pastichapkin or twitch.tv forward slash pastichapkin to watch the live gameplay as I loop this game like a motherfucker.
for the next foreseeable future. And um, yeah, I hope you actually enjoy the show. And I hope to see you all again in the next video. Bye.